<clears throat> That's when you have uh, someone's genitals in your face. <laughs> The private eye or the golden eye? <laughs> private eye. Uh, either one. <laughs> golden eye golden eyes, showers. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <clears throat> you got there faster. Welcome to Namely 90. Wow. The podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right, you're listening to Namely 90s. My name's Andrew, and over there's Brandon. That's me. You can find us online at Namely90s.com or on Twitter and Instagram at Namely90s with an I-0-S. You can also find the show on YouTube at YouTube.com slash at Namely90s. And if you'd like to support the show, head on over to Patreon.com slash Namely90s, also with an I-0-S. Get signed up for one of, your, one of our support levels, not one of yours. Um, and lastly, as we are now saying, please subscribe on your platform of choice, whether that's YouTube, Apple Music, or podcast, or podcast, actually. Um, Deezer, Spotify, any of those. We'd appreciate when did, it. When did we start saying that? Uh, well, we were supposed to do it at the end of like the banter, but then we forgot a lot. So. Oh, no. In the middle of the banter, <laughs> we're supposed to say... And if this is your first time watching us here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Oh, well, anyway, whatever. We did it. And hit Early. a like. And whoever you are that hit the dislike buttons on my name and I's minute, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't like you either. Well, yeah, I think I'm getting, I think I'm managing to get us mixed in, in between like honest trailers and honest video game trailers. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Hi to I find the name and I's minute that. funny, personally. I do too, uh, but I can see why some people would find it reductive. But it's just a way to drive up entertainment uh, or the v- listeners and views for us if they're interested. Right, so, right. Yeah. Um, so don't well, be a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, that hurts their SEO. Well, uh, hey, what's new? Um... I feel like that's a thinly veiled comment about the fact that I accidentally shaved my beard off yesterday. Ooh, oh dear. So tell us the story. Uh, well, it's not much of a story. It was, well, yeah, it was, it, it was just, um, I was like, oh, I haven't shaved in like a week and my beard was getting kind of thick and unmanageable and I was just going to give it a little trim. And uh, I put the I put the guard on, and I didn't check to see the length of the guard, and it just went. I was like, oh, I'll just start with my as usual. Start with my sideburns, get it flat so my fat chipmunk cheeks don't puff out my beard. And it was on zero. Oh, <laughs> a disaster! And I was like, hmm, that's weird. That felt like it touched my skin. And then I was like, that's weird. It looks like I've lost my sideburn. <laughs> Uh, and then, um, I was like, well, I, I guess I'll have to, to shave everything else off. I, I, I shaved down to a goatee and then, um, clearly you should have gone for the very offensive and stereotypical Fu Manchu, which is a Chinese, See, I believe. I don't, I don't right? have the, I don't have the length on or I true. Mean, I, yeah. But, um, I did. Well, no, last time I shut off my beard, I did a handlebar for like five minutes. This time <laughs> I did like the Ponce de Leon. So I kind of like shaved oh, off. Yeah. I, I did like a soul patch and then left the left the <laughs> mustache in the under for five minutes. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, nah. I, I mean, like, the problem with the goatee is it's very midlife crisis. Yes. I felt like, um, Start riding a motorcycle like Zed in uh, uh, Men in Black <laughs> uh, or John Goodman when he had a goatee in Community um, or Roseanne when she had that goatee. No, that's right. Well, uh, his his, little, his literal line in the show is I'm going through something right now. <laughs> 
Maybe That's else had a ponytail. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, I, I, I know you don't grow your beard out that often, but it's always fun to like play around with the different like styles while you're shaving it off um, just to see what they look like. And I think I could have pulled it off. I think I was just like, eh, I need my 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 skin needed to breathe. It's been, I think, over a year since I've done a full shave. Speaking so. of Roseanne, by the way, mm-hmm. um, I just wanted to remind, well, I told you already, but you did. Roseanne Barr has a new comedy special, <laughs> which is going to air on Fox Nation after the Super Bowl. Boy, I can't wait to see how bad the ratings are on that. It's weird uh, how all of that got blurred out in the edit. <laughs> it's called Cancel This. And what I understand is that she stands on stage for 90 minutes just shouting racial slurs at the audience. <laughs> uh, to be fair, she was on Valium. <laughs> Yeah, every time I take Valium, I become a racist. Like that's not an excuse. Valium's supposed to calm you down. It's very, it's very Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> yeah, this is what uh, happens when I take Valium, but also forget to take my bipolar meds. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, sounds sounds about right. Uh, yeah, don't watch I, that crap. Yeah. Well, don't worry. I've blurred out or beeped out literally every way they could figure out what it is. Or not. It depends. Did I remember this bit? Did I not? It's only five minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna in. guess new. No. Uh, um, so yeah. Uh I'll, another fun thing I did today. I, I went disc golfing. Um I because I have a tournament in two weeks and I am screwed. I, <laughs> that bad, huh? So last week at the same course I shot thirteen over. I'm like, oh, it's not bad for not having gone out in like a month and a half. And then after a week of training, I did putting practice twice, did some field work. I played a different course. Uh, I thought I was doing better. I thought I was like, I'm really honing this in. I shot an 18 over today. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And I thought I shot a 19 over, so I don't know how it turned into an 18. But either way, I don't know what happened. (laughs) I missed almost every putt. It's uh, something about the humidity or like a headwind or something. I I mean, it was a little windier than last week, but I, I was throwing better. Like my drives were better. I just couldn't putt or approach for the life of me. And then I kept like shanking it at the end because I kept getting in my head about it. Um, Namely, disc golf. Uh, the power of the mind. But I just, I needed to get that out. Like, yeah, I need to fix my mental game in two weeks. That sounds fun. Uh, wow. Uh, that sounds like a stiff, stiff proposition. That's and not that's how we get into today's sponsor, BetterHelp. <laughs> Use <laughs> yeah. the code betterhelp.com. Uh, slash or HIMS, which sends you Cialis to your door so that you can sit in a bathtub separate from your significant other on a cliff <laughs> with a boner. I thought it was Viagra <laughs> from the Instagram uh, ads that I've been seeing. I think it's both. Because uh, it says Viagra. Actually, if you stack a Viagra and a Cialis, then you get it a really interesting out. effect. Oh. And then you pop in, you pop one of Roseanne's uh, Valium. <laughs> and then you become racist. Shouting racial slurs in the bedroom. Uh, Ooh, I clipped real bad on that. Uh, um, for good reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just, it's their literal advertisement on Instagram right now is this is how millennials give Viagra. I'm like, but again, why do millennials need it so badly? That's, and also apparently I also have hair loss. So according to Facebook, I have both erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. (laughs) I'm like, I don't understand. Can I take these pills together? Is this like, my body's just going to explode (laughs) like a ticking time bomb. Jesus. Yes, I mean, just like uh, think about when you get constipated. I, it's, <laughs> yeah, you're just taking like it's, Metamucil and Imodium constantly. Jeez! Uh, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, these ads are so stupid. I was like, this is not how millennials are doing anything. Right. Go away. There's a new service that because it's like you you basically meet a doctor online mm-hmm. and then they can prescribe you drugs, send them to your house. There's a new service for if you sketchy. get nervous talking to people like presenting or doing something in front of a group, mm-hmm. you can get a doctor online that will send beta blockers to your house, which lowers your heart rate. Yeah, that sounds dangerous. Yeah. What the hell are you thinking? 
Uh, you can't do a cardiac workup on someone via the internet. I just, it's so crazy. You can do that now. Welcome to the 21st century. Uh, I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, therapy online to cardiovascular surgery online. Just, uh, Grab your think, nearest kitchen knife. Therapy <laughs> online is kind of a smart choice because it right. reduces the barrier to entry. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of excuses not to get therapy. Like, oh, I have to schedule. I have to go there. Getting mm-hmm. set up with my therapist took like forever. Right. It was a pain in the butt. There was questionnaires about insurance. It was like, oh, God. Better and counseling com just for registering for counseling. Yeah. It's no, we don't actually have a code yet, but you that's know, hello future- fresh. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. they deliver both therapy and fresh food to your door um yeah i've been making euros anyway <laughs> should we get into it you've been counterfeiting european currency yes uh euro, oh. euros oh a gyro yes a, a, gyro. a gyro well so <laughs> white people i know are Greek I know people white <laughs> technically no <laughs> I mean, technically, yes, but uh, they're European. Um, But yeah, you know, a new Greek restaurant opened up downtown like two weeks ago and uh, I had a euro and I was like, I I can I can make this except for the meat. Well, I was in Costco and they have like the the chicken skewers, the Mediterranean Mediterranean chicken skewers. And then they have like a giant stack of of, uh, like the, the, the pita that you're supposed to make euro with. Um, it's not a pita pocket. <laughs> it's pita it. pocket. And uh, I was like, oh, I, I could, I could just make this. I bought some tzatziki, and uh, uh, then I, I just, I made my own fries to put on top, and I, I, I got it down to a science. It tastes right now because for some reason the tzatziki I bought, which I thought was from like this local place called Baba, but uh, it was actually it said Mexican Farms on it, and I was like. Did they change their name? Mexican Mexicans well known for their tzatziki sauce. <laughs> yes, and but like I I would think why is there cilantro in this? <laughs> there was no garlic. I was like, what? That's not. Uh, it's not appropriate. Right, and but and then it was a hummus place called Mexican Far. I, anyway, uh, it, you know, different cultures can do whatever they want. Uh, I was just like upset because I was, I was going to make my own tzatziki oh, i'm going to make my own tzatziki but it didn't have the right consistency or zip to it so i also had to add like qb mayo to the top and then it everything's great yeah tzatziki sauce shouldn't need to be modified like if it's Correct. good it should be yeah that's that means it was poor poor at best yeah uh so we definitely went over because i decided yeah. to talk about Whoops. euros mayonnaise um all right you gotta get some QP mayo. And well, if you if you if you if you don't have QP mayo, you're missing out. Yeah, it's the way to go. I think that's what they put on um, the bon mis at the place I go to. Mm. Uh, I've been making tomato sandwiches. Delightful. Um, yeah. Uh, you're listening to namely fatties. <laughs> <laughs> given given our goal, it's right this now. This week sure. we'll have uh, Brendan Fraser on to talk about his new film. No just whale. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. We brought you here to you wore a fat suit. <laughs> yeah, but it was like a tasteful fat suit. Yeah, and he like he isn't like thin. He's just not as fat. I feel like as it's not a fat was. suit for comedy. You know what yeah, I mean? That's fair. <laughs> they should do like a it's comedy cut of the trailer. <laughs> we should make a friend's <laughs> cut of the horror. trailer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we've brought you all here today to do another deep dive, and this week. In honor of the release of GoldenEye 007 on Nintendo Switch Online and Xbox Game Pass, we're going to be talking about GoldenEye. And for those of you that are confused, what, what is a deep dive if you're new to this? Right. Um, we have two formats. We have a variety show where we cover, well, a variety of topics and have fun little sketches or bits or games. And then our deep dive where either Brandon or myself do a fair amount of research on a particular topic that we find interesting and present it to you, the listener, and to each other. And is there a schedule for that or are we... Schedule? Yeah, every other schedule. week. We, we switch off every week between a deep dive and a, and a variety show format. Cool. That seemed satisfactory. Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't expecting you to do that, but great. Oh, well, there you go. I'm prepared to... 
They said, I got pumped up. I was listening to some bad religion before this, really effing the establishment or whatever. <laughs> Yes. I don't know how that makes me a better podcaster. But. Uh, Andrew's convinced that I've lost my podcasting skills now that my they beard were, is gone. He, he stored them in his beard. But they were in his beard at the time. Anyway, um, <laughs> this seems a little redundant, but before we go into GoldenEye, which as many of you recognize is a both James Bond film and video game, let's talk a little bit about who James Bond was. Oh. And today, I apologize, it's a little bit wikipedia e. I was in a time crunch, so, uh, but this way you don't have to go on Wikipedia to look it up yourself. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to try to make it not too reedy, but what can you do? By the way, donate to Wikipedia. <laughs> Next time you go on, <laughs> two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, thousand bucks, whatever. <laughs> thousand bucks. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, uh, Commander James range. Bond, CMG RNVR, which I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> some sort of there's a lot of have you noticed british people have a lot of like acronyms after their names mm-hmm. anyway uh, uh, cmg well uh i assume that's the most distinguished order of saint michael and saint george yeah that sounds right and then uh rnvr is definitely royal navy reserve okay cool well, anyway, he's that um, he's a character created by a British journalist and novelist Ian Fleming in 1953. Um, he appears in novels, films, comics, video games. Uh, Fleming initially or Fleming wrote in total 12 Bond novels, uh, two short story collections, uh, although two of them were published after his death posthumously, which is a word that I always have trouble saying post posthumously. Yeah. Posthumously. Anyway, uh, he's a Secret Service agent, as you know, and his code number is 007. I didn't know. Yeah, I feel like he was a different number, and then he gets promoted to like 007 or something. Like he's not a double O agent, right? Uh, I mean, like in, in Casino Royale, the newer one. Yes, in the newer Casino Royale, he's earning his double O status. Um, the movie, not the novel. Right. Um. Anyway, he's basically a composite character of several uh, commandos that apparently Fleming knew during his service in the Naval Intelligence Division in World War II. Mm. Um, but he added his own style and tastes and such. Um, the, he has a number of consistent character traits, I love this, which run throughout the books, including an enjoyment of cars, a love of food, drink, and sex, and an average intake of 60 custom-made cigarettes a day. When did they stop smoking in the Bond movies? Uh, because they they smoked in Goldeneye. Like a little, but not as a matter of practice. I guess I want. I like want. I want to say. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, because I I want to say they stopped smoking after they stopped um sexualizing the women. <laughs> <laughs> Which was in like 89, I think. Yeah, well, 87. It was the first of the two Dalton movies. Yeah, 87. So um, I thought it might be prudent to go through a list of who the James Bonds were. And well, this we're going to start with the most well-known one. So Sean Connery, who portrayed Con- the character from Connery. 1962 to 1971. Oh, uh, Roger Pushy. Moore, who... <laughs> Thank you. Who portrayed the character from 1973 to 1985. Why did you skip over? uh, Uh, I'll come back to it. Okay. Timothy Dalton, 1987 to 1989. Pierce Brosnan, 1995, 2002. And then, of course, Daniel Craig, 2006, 2021. Um, I I I thought Christmas only came once a year. (laughs) There were two I skipped. Uh, George Lazenby Uh uh, did one film in 1969. Which was an official canon film. and uh, It was or was not? was and oh, okay. was the most seminal and important to P- Bond's plot development. And actually, I didn't write that movie down. Which one was that? Uh, that is on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Right. That's in between Connery's last two official ones. And I did not know this, but apparently there was a film starring David Niven mm-hmm. called Casino Royale in 1967, yes. which I was not aware of. Uh, I learned this. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very like Austin Powersy. Because like, oh, it's, it's a little it's a, camp, it's super camp. It's a parody, and it's uh, it's a parody of the Connery films too. 
which had only been out for a little while at that gotcha. point. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm I'm not a Bond expert by any means. I enjoy the films, the newer ones more so, the game obviously, but um I mean, I might have done two out of the three episodes that uh, all 90s all action all the time did for okay. uh the 90s Bonds. Um, um so but yeah, I, I knew a lot of that. So that's kind of your your primer, if you will. Primer? <laughs> what is that word? Is it primer or primer? It's primer. But I think I've heard primer in like English. Yeah, speaking. I was going to say if you're English. If English. You're English speaker. Well, it is an episode about a British character. Very true. Uh, so that Chip brings Chop. us to Chip Pierce Chop. Brosnan's first film, yes. Goldeneye, which was Goldeneye. released in 1995. It's the 17th, according to Wikipedia, in the James Bond series uh, that's mm-hmm. produced by Eon Productions. Um, and this, as I said, is Pierce Brosnan's first movie. Um, it was the first movie not to utilize any story elements from the novelist, Ian oh, Fleming. Interesting. Um, it was also the first film where uh, longtime producer Albert Broccoli was replaced by his daughter, Barbara. Broccoli. Barbara. Yeah. So oh, she. Uh, yeah. Her cousin Cauliflower wasn't available <laughs> for this movie. So, whoa. Uh, okay. Why was this? So sorry. <laughs> Cauliflower um, broccoli. This movie it was released after an unusually long six year hiatus. Are we and make a Sean Bean joke too? I'm sure I will. Um, <laughs> yeah, that whole flicking hi- the bean disaster from last time. <laughs> six year hiatus after uh, uh, legal disputes. Apparently, was it Living Daylights or was it? Um, I don't know which one, but essentially, Dal- second as Dalton film. All those things were proceeding the contract for Dalton expired and they were able to replace him with Pierce Brosnan. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the first time, M uh, was recast as a, with a female actress, Judy Dench. That was cool. I um, that. Don't really care about that. Honestly, uh, 007. Desmond Llewellyn is the only actor who reprises his role as techie gadget guy Q, uh, which is awesome. I love that That's guy. That's my lunch. <laughs> I know. I love his, the whole bit in this with, with Q. Mm. Um, and it's the first Bond film made after the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the oh, end of the Cold War. That's which true. Which provides a lot of background for the plot. And actually, I did not know, never really made the connection that the intro scene or sequence mm. is a woman destroying a hammer and sickle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never made that connection. Golden The Sorry. film stars Pierce Brosnan, Sean Bean, Judy Dench, Fem- Femke Jensen. I can't say that name alan coming among among others um i thought it might be fun to go through some of the notable credits of these different actors you left out hagrid oh yeah shoot yes the guy who played hagrid played uh played what's his face the gangster guy yeah something like that yes robbie coltrane yeah rob thank you thank you um so I just thought it'd be fun to go through some of the notable credits. Some of them are just for fun. Sure. Uh, so Pierce Brosnan's notable credits include Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> we talked true. about that. Uh-huh. Remington Steel. Oh yeah, the spy. Mars Attacks, a hilariously <laughs> terrible movie. Dante's Peak, which is hilariously one of my faves. Mamma Mia, dear God. Uh, Thomas and Friends, The Great Discovery, about- the movie. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which. Isn't that another one of those like kids book series that they wanted to get really big that just never did? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Percy think, Jackson, and the Olympians, the lightning thief. I think they rebooted it twice already. Why is that such a long name? He also was in the world's end, which I did not know. And black Adam, the world's. <laughs> so that's the one that we went to see thinking. No, I never saw that movie. That's the third Cornetto. No, Cornetto you know, we saw it together, didn't we? But I've never seen that movie. What? No, we saw it. I'm, I swear to God, we saw it. It came I out in the summer. Seen that movie. It came out. It came out in the summer. It came out like two weeks after the world's end, which we also went to see because we thought it was that movie. Wait, what's the other movie? The world's end. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, no, the other one, the, um, the one with, uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen and they're at like a house party and how oh, that's up pineapple no. express. No, what, what are you talking about? It's, it's the one after pineapple express that they're all in. And it came out two weeks prior, two weeks before the last Cornetto trilogy movie, which ha- and they had a similar name. Oh, this is the end. This is the end. I have not seen The World's End. I, I, I truly have not seen it. I swear to God. Because anyway, they're... we'll come back to this fight later. 
Um, but yeah, Pierce Brosnan, quite the prolific actor. Let's talk about Sean Bean. Um, notable credits. Black Beauty. That's a horse movie. Uh, <laughs> Patriot Games. I had that on VHS, by the way. Anna Karenina. The Lord of the Rings. National Treasure. Game of Thrones. Robot Chicken. And then a comma, which means I forgot to keep researching. <laughs> cool. Uh, um, it came out in July of 2013. We saw it. I don't remember it. I, I, oh, I, I, I know Pullman. you don't remember I in, it. I was in Pullman. Not during the summer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, research fellowship. 23rd? No, I swear to God, because it anyway, was the, the you uh, liked you liked the, the second one. So I know, I, I never saw it. It's kind of a tragedy. I liked the first one. Um, this list is shorter than I expected. I mean, her list Sean is long, Bean. but oh, didn't Smith recognize Bond. the name. Judy Dench. Uh, <laughs> Chocolat. The Chronicles of Riddick, which seems like a ridiculous credit for her. Uh, Pride I mean, and Prejudice. Jane Eyre. Here we go. And Cats. <laughs> no cats. What a uh, nightmare. So Judy Dench, she's known Dame uh Judy Dench. Uh, she's lovely. I, I, she, I like her. Yeah, she's known for for doing stuff like Chronicles of Riddick and weird weird, interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh also um she was in a midsummer night's dream back in the sixties. Yeah, I mean, there, she has a lot of credits. I just kind of went through the ones that I recognized or thought were funny. Um, Pride and Prejudice. Which brings us to Famke Jensen. Uh, Star Trek, The Next Generation. Multiple X-Men filmed what? as Jean Grey. What episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation? She's in one episode. I don't That's remember which I one. Uh, the Taken Trilogy. She plays mm-hmm. uh, 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 the ex-wife of uh, Liam Neeson's character. Uh, the Blacklist, which is another vehicle for James Spader to be typecast as a complete weirdo. Uh, This time without hair. (laughs) How to get away with murder, which I believe is Grey's Anatomy, but for true crime. Uh, And that's all I've written for him. Her. (laughs) She's unrecognizable in those roles compared to this movie. Is it like the hair or what is it that makes... I I don't know what that is. In any movie. 20 years of difference, I guess. (laughs) Uh, oh, season five, episode twenty-one, Star Trek: The Next Generation, the perfect mate, where uh, Picard is seduced by a Beta Z. That'd be your first mate, okay? Or not a Beta Z, a Trill. Uh, and lastly, Alan Cumming. Which why is his list? Oh, I typed other stuff. Um, Black Beauty. <laughs> he was the voice of Black Beauty, which I didn't know horses talked, but uh, with Sean Bean, he was also in. Our favorite movie, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. I do recall that? Shout yes. out to this piece of garbage. Uh, tune into episode 99 of Namely 90s, where we talk about it in depth. Was that episode 99? It was. Wow. I'm surprised it was that far back. Uh, he was also in one episode of Third Rock from the Sun. Tune into episode 11 of our 2022 <laughs> 12 Days of Christmas specials with the Insanely Dangerous po- Retro Pod Show, where we talk about an episode. X2, X Men. United as Kurt Wagner slash oh, yeah. the Nightcrawler. He's Nightcrawler. Famke Jansen, uh-huh. I believe. Yeah. Son of the Mask. Yikes. <laughs> the Smurfs. Multiple. The Good Wife. And well, his was so long. I couldn't believe how long that it was. Like his his um, filmography. I mean, he's been in so much Harry Potter. I thought wasn't he in Harry Potter for a while? I, I assume every British actor was in but he Harry like dropped out of it or something. Uh, well, because he was also in Spice World and uh, Flintstones Viva Rock Vegas, and uh, for some of the younger people, Josie and the Pussycats and Spy Kids. He was the villain in the first Spy Kids. Oh yeah, and also Nicholas Nickleby. It. So. What do you, uh, what are your memories of this movie? Because I Hagrid. fondly remember it. Oh, no, 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 Robbie Coltrane. Um, sorry, one more time. No, 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 Robbie Coltrane. I didn't get to him. Oh, gotcha. I meant, I, I completely forgot he was in this. I mean, he's Harry not in Potter. it for much. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, he comes back later. Uh, yeah, true. My memories of this is we had the video game. <laughs> And I think I had to piece most of the movie together from that. Oh, you didn't get to watch the movie very no, young. I don't. Yeah, I don't recall because I don't think I saw it until it was on uh, Spike's um, or or TNN's um, 007 Days of Christmas. 
Oh, okay. So that would be the first time I saw it. So that would be probably around when Golden Knight came out. Yeah, I think I got exposed to it then when they had those <clears throat> those Christmas uh, specials. So mm-hmm. yeah, I also, mean, go ahead. Oh, so I was listening to, this, to someone else's podcast, and they were talking about how uh, it was TNT or TBS would play at Christmas. Oh, it wasn't a podcast; it was one of my friends. They like, would play Elvis movies around Christmas time. I'm like, no, they. What? No. Why? What? No. Yeah, I don't that's remember not that. Do you what I recall. That? Yeah, no. no. It was, I remember 007 Days of Christmas. And that it was, was awesome. It. I remember watching it on my parents like 13 inch TV in their room. Yes. They didn't want to watch it downstairs. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I would, I'll, and I'll I think I got in upstairs. trouble for saying the word octopusy by <laughs> my dad. <laughs> so one year my uh, my dad got my Uncle Jim a the Connery VHS box set. Uh, at Costco for Christmas, and I remember reading all the titles, and I'm like, "Octopussy, that's a fun name." So I said, I kept saying it a lot too because I didn't know, I didn't know the implication at yeah, the time. I didn't know either. Yeah, I mean, it just I liked cats. I mean, there's another film named that, but I, well, if we can't. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that stars the Octo Mom. <laughs> yeah. God, she is. Mm, never mind. Not going there. An octopusy. Uh, anyway, but no, um, I so like most of my memories are based off the game, and the game, while it tries to, to literally follow, like follow the story, it's very different. <laughs> Not yeah. super different, but liberties like, were taken. Liberty, Why like, are there so many levels where you're out in the snow and like in the bunker and in the silo? Or like uh, Famke Johnson's Zena Anatov. Uh, she doesn't have giant drone guns at the end of the freaking jungle level. <laughs> she just yeah, dies from. Yeah, she just dies like uh, unceremoniously in in like the yeah. helicopter lands on her or something. I, something I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does she also? Doesn't she also choke Pierce Brosnan with her legs? Yes. Uh, and like, well, there was something oddly sexual about how aggressively, like she, how aggressive yeah. she was. Yes, uh, I because I believe she was in nothing but a towel at the time. Yeah, that was an interesting sequence. Um, I remember, well, I, I remember the Boris with the cookie pen and the I am yeah. invincible. Yeah, uh, a little bit overplayed that character, but that's kind of his his shtick. Yeah, yeah I every guess. Alan Cumming character ever. Yeah, but but it was fun. It Cummings. was fun. Um, yeah, and, and then it features that giant antenna in cuba or yes no the, puerto rico uh, uh no it's a different it's a south american country i want to say it is uh i don't remember it's the it's the something observatory and it got shut down in like 2016 why so did it was I, oh, the arecibo observatory That's in puerto is. rico is a radio oh, telescope rico. but it recently became too damaged and they've decided to close it i believe uh well they closed it they closed and, it over four years ago well then like the thing in the middle the, fell down fell, and then yeah, broke yeah during, whatever else during covid yeah um so that's unfortunate but it's pretty cool yeah it is um the dam featured at the beginning of the movie is in like some random European country actually that I do not know anything about I looked at the Vin- Vin- Vicenzia Sorry. Is Arc Angus. Vincenzo Dam. Oh. Vincenzo. Vincenzo. Vincenzo I Dam. I didn't know Archangels was an actual city it, it in is. Russia. I yeah. Uh yeah. Uh Ver- Versaja Dam. Sorry, Versazka Dam is the name of it in Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, I should have visited that when I visited uh, the Sphinx Observatory, which is featured in the George Lazenby, James Bond film on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Um, yeah, so uh, I, for me, this, I think it's my favorite of the Brosnan. It's a, I think it's a good. I mean, of the Brosnan movies, I mean, you've got Tomorrow Never Dies. You've got. I liked uh, Worlds Not Enough. I'm going to be honest. It's not bad. Um, what was the other one? Die Another uh, Day. T- Mm. Die another day is terrible. Tomorrow, tomorrow never dies. Did you say that one? Tomorrow never dies is is eh, yeah. I, I don't recall you liking that one for some reason. 
I mean, I think we saw that one in the theater. Maybe it mm-hmm. might've been the first one I saw in the theater having. Yeah. I think I was jealous of that. Having gone back and watched it. I think I appreciate it more than I did when I was a kid, but also here's the thing about, uh, about Brosnan's bond. They eventually got it. Like every single line he says <laughs> is a quip <laughs> it is like you can't just have regular dialogue yeah <laughs> and, could you like, imagine if you knew a person like that in real life right it wait be that like, might be me i was gonna say it was like it was, it was if both of us became a bomb i movie. blame pierce brosnan okay yeah uh, like even dalton had like actual conversations with his felix lighter and like it, yeah it just for me because it's the era I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Pierce Brosnan is James Bond to me. I'm, I can't, I, even yeah. though it's not the classic, it's not considered the best. He's not considered the best. Still, he's like my Bond. You know, I kind of have that like attachment mm-hmm. to it because that's what I grew up with. Yeah. Um. And when they cast Daniel Craig, I was like, I don't know. So I'm a convert. I, yeah. I think Daniel Craig. Craig did a great Play job. Brilliantly. Um, I so my favorite, like like I liked Brosnan when we were kids. Um, my favorite old school bond was Roger Moore because of Octopussy. Mm-hmm. No, um, because of, he just had the he had the style without being over Connery about it's it. It's also hard to watch sixties movies. Like it's yeah. it's a yeah. I I they're a three out of I guess three out of six of Connery's movies. What's the one with the circus? That's, uh, that is octopusy. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That was creepy. Yeah. Circus is creeping out. Well, that's the one when 008 gets killed while Brosnan's like wearing a clown outfit or something. Or not, uh, not uh, Roger, Roger Moore's. Roger wearing, Moore, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that was a weird one. Um, later, later more ones aren't great, but like the right. first three or four are pretty solid. Um, I, currently I, I think Dalton's the best bond, uh, controversial opinion. Cause you know, I've heard that before, right? It's just his, his movies are tight and they also, uh, managed to, that, that was when they were like, we're not going to hire actresses just to be ogled and, uh, sleep with bond. He's the only bond that didn't sleep with his bond girls. <laughs> And then Golden Eye, they're like, all right, let's just do this thing. Yeah, let's just do, let's let's have fight sex. <laughs> yeah. Her last name is on the top. Yeah. Oh, I feel sh- like they also went back to the sexually suggestive names after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like Here's pussy, the thing. Pussy it's galore. formulaic. It's dated. It's not it's really appropriate. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. It I mean, yeah. I don't know what. Yeah. I mean, I could do without all the women's stuff. Like, it's a little bit much, but. Well, it's like there's a there's a Connery scene where I think it's I think it's James Bond. There's there's a like a scene where he just smacks a woman and then kisses her. Oh my gosh! Yeah, um, I'm Pow, pretty sure right in the kisser. I'm what pretty sure it? that's yeah. I'm pretty sure like he 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 smacks them, smacks her, then forces himself on her, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's a James Bond while move. she's drunk. The, d- James, <laughs> yeah. You're going, you're going to get at least probation for that. Come on. Yeah. It's the probably 60s. should get jail time. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, it's also a captain Kirk move that that might be what I'm confusing it with. I think as long I, as you have an open hand back then, it was, okay. it's, it's, it's the captain Kirk slap and then kiss. Um, that's what I was thinking of. But anyway, looking at the timer. Um, oh yeah, we're way over. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's golden. Eye, the movie in a nutshell, I highly suggest you watch it. And here's, the Name We 90s Minute. Welcome back to our mid-episode break, Name We 90s Minute. Every week we look back at a culturally relevant show, movie, or piece of pop culture that probably helps stoke the algorithm. This week, in honor of GoldenEye 007's surprise release on Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack and Xbox Game Pass last week, we're looking back at the movie that the game is based on, GoldenEye. GoldenEye is a 1995 spy film, the 17th in the official James Bond franchise, and the first to star Bond number 5 according to Andrew's naming convention for the Spider-Man. The movie stars the guy that you wish didn't sing in that ABBA movie, the guy that dies in almost every movie he's in, Jean Grey from the X-Men movies, Hagrid, Vegan Flute from Spy Kids, and Old Deuteronomy from Cats. The movie starts with a flashback to Remington Steele and Ned Stark infiltrating a Soviet facility with the latter seemingly dying as they attempt to flee. After the title screen and the fall of communism, Dr. Fate is racing to stop Dark Phoenix from stealing a French 
Gyrocopter Tiger and fails. The helicopter transports the villains to a secret former Soviet bunker in Siberia where they steal the key to the Golden Eye, a satellite capable of producing an electromagnetic pulse blast that destroys the bunker and everyone inside apart from the villains, their hacker, and the new Bond girl who is also a hacker because this is a movie from the mid-90s. So Dante's Peak gets sent to St. Petersburg to hunt down the villains working for a dissident group called and led by Janice. The boyfriend from Mrs. Doubtfire gets sex fought to unconsciousness by the mom from Taken and wakes up in the stolen helicopter with hacker computer Bond girl and learns that Bolomir didn't die nine years ago like he thought and is actually the son of Lenz Cossacks who are repatriated back to the USSR after World War II because they collaborated with the Axis powers. And if that sentence confuses you, you must have grown up in America. Thomas Crown and Hacker Girl manage to escape from the helicopter before it explodes and then get captured by Russian soldiers. During the interrogation, General Urumov, who is working for Janice, breaks in, steals Hacker Bond Girl and tries to flee as the November Man chases them down in a tank. Urumov uses Hacker Bond Girl as a hostage aboard their missile train and then gets killed by the Matador saving the Hacker Bond Girl. The two of them travel to Cuba where there is a second Golden Eye control bunker and the villains are attempting to destroy the Bank of England from it. The pair get captured trying to plant explosives to stop the evil plan. Evil Hacker Guy ends up picking up an exploding pen and making an explode, freeing the two. Hacker Bond Girl stops the satellite by pointing it at their location as Mamma Mia Here We Go Again hunts down and drops the guy who gets impaled by an anchor in Pager Games to his death. And that's Goldeneye in a Namely 90s Minute. More or less. And now, back to the show. So, we've talked about the movie. Yeah. Now we- it's time to talk about one of my favorite, probably, video games of all time. Goldeneye 007. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> Wait, are these two things related? Are they? Because they came out two years apart. <laughs> anyway, um, more Wikipedia. Here we go. Goldeneye. Goldeneye 007 is a 1997 first-person shooter developed by Rare and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo 64. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, it's based on Goldeneye the movie. And features James Bond, who is uh, trying to prevent a criminal syndicate from using a satellite weapon called Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Okay, I'm sorry. Goldeneye. Uh, they navigate a series of levels. And in multiplayer mode, you can have up to four players competing in several deathmatch scenarios via split screen. My first experience with split screen, by the way, as far as I recall. I think we played Mario Kart first. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mario Kart. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. Um, apparently it was produced by a fairly like unskilled group of people, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> At um, rare or, or like the people who developed this game apparently were not very like experienced in this field, yeah. but they ended up doing a damn good job. Oh. Uh, it faced low expectations from the gaming media mm-hmm. during development, but ultimately received critical acclaim and sold over 8 million copies. Wow. Making it the third best-selling Nintendo 64 game, Behind which I Mario guess 64 and Super Mario or Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart, yeah, we guess so. I don't actually have the list, but huh. um, it was praised for visuals, gameplay depth, and variety. Ninety-eight won the BAFTA Interactive Entertainment Games Award and four awards from the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, which is pretty good for a what looks like garbage first-person shooter. Are, are BAFTA, like, do they have, is BAFTA like a daytime Emmy? Like, do they just give those away for literally anything? I, I think you show up, you just get one when you walk in the door. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, it's like a Millennials Little League. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Okay. I can make that joke. Because uh, you anyway. both experienced it and are now a parent. So, the game demonstrated the viability of home consoles as platform for first person shooters, which mm. hadn't existed before um, and signaled a transition from doom like shooters to more realistic style. Uh, pioneered features such as atmospheric single player missions, mm, sorry, mm, atmospheric single player missions, stealth elements, multiplayer console deathmatch, uh, and in many in many different uh, you know, analyses and rankings, it's considered one of the greatest video games ever made, mm. which I would agree with. I mean, maybe not the best, but certainly top 10 top uh, of all time. I, maybe top 10. Like, I, I, I don't think I don't think it sits in the top 10 of all time anymore. I think. Yeah, at the that's time fair. It did, I think um, like if you if you look at FPSs, it definitely is the, the 
jump well, it, from doom to this. It depends to, on like, how you're deciding the what the best one is. You know, it depends on your particular criteria for determining uh, that. Right. No, I, yeah. I just like, yeah, my like, mind definitely has replayability in it, which yeah, this, this game actually did have better replayability than some because they were like mm-hmm. different difficulty levels, which you don't see anymore. It's but I can see getting a little nightmare. dull. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a completionist dream. Excuse me. Cause you, well, you, at least, uh, unlike hymns would think at least you're not going to finish too early. <laughs> okay. Back uh, to this. Yeah. Um, so I tried to, the next part is kind of about how it was developed. And I tried to pare this down, but I thought it was all interesting. So I'm, I am going to go through it. Um, go for it. so, uh, The game was developed by a British studio, Rare, as we know, um, and directed by Martin Hollis, who was the second programmer on the coin-op version of Killer Instinct, Hmm. which I don't think I've ever played, but it's kind of funny, like a coin-op guy (laughs) was making, I guess they're similar like Uh, platforms uh, in a way. I think think arcade games were closer back then to video games. Yeah, not now, of course. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, in 94, a discussion was had about the possibility of developing a game for the upcoming movie. Um, and then due to the success of Rare's 1994 game, Donkey Kong Country, mm-hmm. originally this game, GoldenEye, was supposed to be a 2D platformer for the SNES. Oh, wow. Uh, but he proposed a, the Hollis, uh, proposed a 3D shooting game for the upcoming Nintendo 64. Uh, and created basically a, a document with design ideas, gadgets, weapons, characters, story digression from the film and artificial intelligence, which would react to the player. Worst artificial intelligence ever. You walk around the corner and it takes them like three and a half seconds to notice you and fire their weapon at you. And then they have storm storm for the most part. I mean, but it can be a difficult game at spots. Oh yeah, well, I mean, double that. double O agent trying to trying to speed run just the second level to get the invincibility cheat has kicked my ass so far. Um, so when asked what the different um, sort of inspiration or influences were, it included Sega's 1994 light gun shooter Virtua Cop. Oh yeah, uh, ID Software's Doom from 1993 and. The and Super Mario 64. <laughs> that seems like a weird influence. Well, but I guess just, it has to be. It was the first 3D game. Um, features such as gun reloading, position dependent hit reaction animations, and an aiming system activated with the R button were adopted from Virtual Cop. So they kind of just flat out stole that idea. I was going to say, like the reticle is almost the same thing because I. Our new barcade that opened up has the original Virtual Cop, which, by the oh. way, sucks compared right. to Virtual Cop 2 because they don't have the pedal. Um, but uh, yeah, I played a couple rounds on that and nice. it's very old. This is interesting and cool. The uh, developers initially considered having players reload weapons by unplugging and reinserting the rumble pack on the controller. Mm. <laughs> That would have been expensive. But Nintendo opposed the idea. I don't think the controller was really meant for that many insert and removal cycles. Well, well that and the Rumble Pack, not everyone owned one. Right. So it would have been. Uh, yeah, I'm glad they didn't do it, but I never would have even thought of that. That's kind of an interesting concept. I like that concept, kind of. At the end of the day, it would have been annoying. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, what, what are you going to hold the controller like? Like this? Yeah, this is me True. pointing, but holding just uh, the, the middle prong. On the anyway, the controller. concept of these several varied objectives within each mission was inspired by multiple tasks in each stage of Super Mario 64. Uh, this is kind of cool. The team actually got to visit the studios of the GoldenEye film several times to take photos and blueprints. Um, the companies that controlled James Bond, that's Eon Product- Productions and MGM, granted the term broad license to extend the game beyond the storyline. <laughs> That basically so to make it more cohesive as a game and progress through a story better you know m- movies are not video games and video games are not movies so i i get that some liberties were taken yes like uh xena on a top with the crazy guns 
<laughs> at the end of oh, yeah. the jungle. She level. had two turrets at the end of the, at the top right, of turrets. They're they're at the top of the bridge, or like you had to run across the bridge, then climb up a ladder, and it was at the top of the ladder. So every time you get to the top of the ladder, you just get che- like Swiss cheesed at the top. Um, so that's that wasn't in the movie at all. She was dead by no, then. But yeah, anyway, she, she died. I, I swear. And like, there wasn't the much of a jungle sequence in the movie. No, it was really fast. Like they they show up, they get inside, and then she's like hunt, trying to hunt them down and dies. It's also daytime. Off- yes. <laughs> Why is it so well, dark in the game? It's always dark. Well, True. I mean, the dam level or the opening dam is light out. End statement. <laughs> one of the one of the surface levels is light out, and the other one's dark for some reason. The frigate level is light out. Yeah. Frigate. Frigate. Anyway, uh, a couple more things. So as far as its legacy, I mean, yeah, it's one of the greatest games of all time and influenced <laughs> a bunch of stuff. <laughs> this guy says, so it says in a retro in a retrospective analysis, Nintendo life editor, Mark Reese gave golden eye 007, eight out of 10 stating that although the multiplayer mode stands up, well, it's graphics audio and fiddly aiming system are dated. Mm-hmm. He noted that GoldenEye 007's approach to difficulty settings provides considerable replay value, but a system, but is a system rarely used in modern first-person shooters. I have a problem with this review. Okay. Because it's accurate. No, I mean, I can be objective, but I don't think I don't think you can call it dated. Like, yes. It's dated. It's from 1997. Mm-hmm. That's therefore. Yes, but but you literally just said you can't watch 1960s movies. No, I know. But what I'm saying because is because they are. We talked about, you know, maybe this isn't in your top 10 list of best video games, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But your top 10 list probably includes games that are older. Yeah. Super Mario Brothers 3, Grand Theft Auto 3. So for you to say threes. Super Mario 3 mm-hmm. is not great because it's but graphics it, are bad and it's dated. Yeah, of course it is, but it but still can be a great it's, game. It's not. That game is not. It is timeless. As is uh, Grand Theft Auto is a little bit closer to being dated, but I, compared I, I to GoldenEye, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I do not think your pick of my example. That's like saying, you know, you know, a 1973 Gremlin is, you know, worse than a brand new Ferrari. Like, yeah, obviously, okay, yeah. but it has its charms and it Does can it? still be a good thing. But you know, it's not, the problem is they can't be apples to apples because mm-hmm. like, yes, there are many games. There are terrible games that look much more current than Goldeneye. Well, I mean, uh, so I would say like but eight out of 10 is not a bad review either. I mean, I'm not, no, he's not yeah, trashing the game. That's true. But for, for like top 10 games of all time, I feel like, on the 64 golden eye was a great game but is not something i like even going back and playing it right now it's fun it's nostalgic it's not yeah. something i would want to play it's not a lot terribly enjoyable <laughs> like if you were to come over right now we would maybe get like a half hour of entertainment out of playing yeah. it before throwing controllers I think at my games television. have creature comforts now that you didn't have before then it's kind of like you know, the new car, it's got air conditioning, right? You know, it's fun to drive the other one for a few miles on a Sunday, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's not something you'd want to drive to work in. Let's put it that way. Right. And uh, you heard it here. I would not drive to work in the video game. <laughs> Golden Eye Devil <007. laughs> I, I mean, if they put, if, if either of the two remakes that just came out had an option for a better control scheme, like a modern control scheme. And I think the Xbox one has is the closer of the two. Yeah. It would make for a more intuitive playthrough and a more fun playthrough. Yeah. Uh, right now it's like Turok controls and it, it's trying to get, just trying to get, trying to be a facility on double O agent in under two minutes and five seconds was tough as a kid. Yeah. It's fucking difficult uh, to having to relearn. I the think control scheme. The other thing is, I kind of feel like it was a cop out. Like they did not. You love to see an old game. You know, yes, it's refreshed a little, but 
you know, it'd be kind of cool if they fully did it up. And there was someone who was doing a mod on like a modern shooter platform mm-hmm. that reflected this game, but it looked modern. Well, do you remember the last time that they, and they got shut down? The last it time it wasn't licensed. Are you going into this? The no, not they, no. I wasn't planning to. You can the remake of Goldeneye uh, featuring Daniel Craig's Bond, mm. uh, and also it wasn't Goldeneye at all. <laughs> uh, no, someone was literally making a direct oh, no, copy, yeah. but and it looked spectacular, but they they got shut down. No, no, I I, I knew that. I, this is a separate. No, thing. I know you're referring to something okay. else. Yeah. Um, which I also owned and bought, I bought the PlayStation Move for, and not worth it. I never wow. used this, never used that stupid gun accessory again. That's dumb. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, there's. Move it's always a trap there. when they try to do that crap. Like, just don't bother. Yeah, uh, and that was PS3 era, not PS4 era Move controllers. But uh, um, I do remember one thing. A tidbit I forgot to mention is yes, when I was a kid. I had to go to this. I had to go to a muscular dystrophy camp. Do you remember this? I do not. Well, so I, I, I remember you have it. But the Muscular <laughs> Dystrophy Association puts on a yearly camp mm-hmm. where kids from all over the area, possibly the country. I'm not sure if there's like regional ones can come to this camp and have fun because, they, you know, they don't get to go to the other camps always because they're right. in wheelchairs Physical, or whatever. Yeah. And I wasn't in a wheelchair, but so I, no. you know, it was fine. But Um, I remember there was like a communal area and in it was a massive big screen TV and just this game on split screen 24 seven. And I'm like, (laughs) really? Their strategy is (laughs) like, give these young children this shooting game. Well, back then we didn't. Well, we didn't. Yeah, I don't. I, I still don't believe it, but I um, don't believe I think video games are a scapegoat for the mm-hmm. systemic issues in this country. Correct. Wow. I'm starting to sound real serious, but like video games don't kill people. Mental illness kills people. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I, these, yeah, uh, uh, these are a scapegoat and I don't think they deserve it. And Honestly, it was pretty tame, this game. You know, I mean, it wasn't like excessively bloody. No one's head came off. Yeah, well, you could do slappers only and just <laughs> as as odd jobs, slap people in the crotch. <laughs> Classic. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I love this game. It's not. Have you played it yet? No, I haven't had a chance yet. I've been mm. working, but uh, I'll probably play through it. I'll probably play it on the easy level just because I just want to play it. Just for the nostalgia. You know, mm. I'll probably never pick it up again. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. No, I, I, I think once I a hundred percent it, unless like you come over, uh, I do not see. I can see a little split screen it. action for, like you said, a half hour. Yeah. And mm. then play something more fun. Yeah. Mario Kart 64. Um, yeah, but I, I need, I need, I need to justify purchasing four of these, which but, is the N- Nintendo switch 64 controller. Yeah, I check it out. Go on Nintendo switch online or Xbox game pass. If you will, you, you need the expansion pass for the Nintendo six or for the switch oh. to, to get it. But anyway, give it a play. I, I would recommend it. I'm currently on the second level. Wow. Yes. Then you well, know the game pretty well. Well, I'm trying to complete everything. I'm trying to I'm trying to get all the cheats as I go instead of going back and and doing it. So it's taking like a while. It's it's been a while since there was you were shooting at commies. That's it's a timeless classic. Are they still commies if the, the USSR has fallen? Yeah, I mean they look so. like it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think I think that might be it. Uh, Goldeneye. Uh, yes, Goldeneye. That's it for this week's Deep Dive Edition of Navy 90s. Remember, you can always find new episodes out every Monday and join us next week for our variety show episode. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at Navy 90s with 90s or find our personal accounts at Beach Waiting at Navy Andrew and tell us how to beat facility on double O agent uh, in under two minutes and five seconds. If you'd like to support the show, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Navy 90s, also with a 90s. Finally, you can also contact us through our website, Navy 90s.com, kind of. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Audible, uh, Audible on the top, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeart, Good Pods, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Brandon, uh, that's Andrew, and we'll catch you next time.
next time. on the top.